mushroom getting stronger and stronger. So the mushroom cap is now completely outside the veil of the mushroom and the veil of the mushroom has now attached itself to the rim of the cap of the mushroom and it is concealing the gills of the mushroom. And as the mushroom cap expands further and further and further, this universal veil cannot stretch any further and it begins to tear and this is seen as the circumcision of the mushroom. As the mushroom expands further, the universal veil separates itself completely from the underside of the cap, falls, and hangs on the stalk or stipe of the mushroom like a skirt. The amanita will continue to grow upward, flattening itself into a small table. One may wish to keep in mind that the knights of the round table were, or are, if these knights ever evolved into the knights templars, the keepers and protectors of the holy grail. This is important to remember because the next stage in the growth cycle of this mushroom is the cup or grail stage. The mushroom cap continues to turn upward and the cap becomes somewhat of a cup or chalice and will often hold the morning dew or rain. When the morning dew collects in the cup of the upturned mushroom cap, some of the psychedelic substances are drawn out of the mushroom and into the water. Consequently, the water is colored red like blood. Some of this bright red pigment from the mushroom's cap bleeds into the water. This, among other things, will fade the mushroom from a bright red into an orange-like or golden color. Although the psychedelic effects would not be nearly as intense as a belly full of mushrooms, one could literally take this golden colored chalice shaped mushroom and drink the blood of Jesus from the Holy Grail. Not only is this mushroom the literal Holy Grail, it is also the mythological phoenix. The phoenix is born from its ashes, but it will never live to leave its nest, for as it lifts its wings in attempt to fly, it bursts into flames and engulfs itself, leaving nothing behind but its own ashes, and the cycle continues. Here are the eggs in the nest, the colorful red eggs of the phoenix. The amanita resembles a red bird with wings. As the phoenix lifts its wings in attempt to fly, it bursts into flames and engulfs itself. As the fungus quickly decomposes, it leaves nothing behind, but its own ashes, the millions of mushroom spores, and the hair-like mycelia attached to the roots of the tree that grow underground. And as the cycle continues, as the mushroom spores serve as the seed of the mushroom, seemingly planting itself in the same location over and over. And these stories were created to pass this type of knowledge down Easter is a great example of this. The Easter egg hunt is a mushroom hunt. You find the correct mushroom. It's a way of identifying the mushroom. Find us the correct mushroom and we'll get you a treat. And who better to go hunting these mushrooms, these colorful little egg-like mushrooms, or the big holy grail type mushrooms, who better to go find these mushrooms than little kids who can crawl up underneath these trees rather than some big clumsy adult. These mushrooms have a symbiotic relationship with these trees, conifer trees. They love conifer trees, pine trees. They flourish under pine trees. And this mushroom is the hidden mushroom, hidden eggs. You can see here this big bright red mushroom is obvious on the screen, but just below it is one that's hidden. So you have to have a good eye. Depending on the season and depending on the area, these mushrooms can be gold as well. So they are the golden egg. We see these mushrooms reflected in our Easter cards as well. The kind Easter wishes as the gnome is leaning upon the mushroom with his sacred text or his recipe book open. 
So we pass this knowledge down to our children. We initiate the children. So like Santa Claus who dresses in red and white, the shaman will dress in the colors of their sacred plants and the Amanita using shaman will dress in the red and white colors of the Amanita muscaria. And here we see the Pope dressing in something that looks quite a bit like the Amanita mushroom and the snow adds a little extra effect putting the white dots on the red cap. The Popes and Cardinals all throughout history have dressed just like this Amanita muscaria mushroom. This figure identifies the Virgin Mary in the Dormition icon as Amanita form. Notice the red cap, the skirt-like wrap over the shoulders, and the hash marks at the bottom. As we mentioned earlier, medieval cathedrals that were primarily used for religious study were often called mystery schools. And here you can see a sunburst made out of stained glass. Above a mushroom shaped doorway, all of it based in sacred geometry. And the Eleusinian mysteries were undoubtedly the most famous of the secret religious rites of ancient Greece. And here is Persephone and Demeter, and what are they doing? Well, the most important part of the Eleusinian mysteries was the ingestion of the Kikion, or the Kaikion. And what could that have been? It was an initiation. The road to Eleusis argues strongly that Demeter's potion, the Kikion, was entheogenic, most likely ergot. And more recently, Professor Carl Ruck of Boston University argues in Sacred Mushrooms, Secrets of Eleusis, that the Kikion was a mushroom. We'd like to discuss Santa Claus again for a moment. This mysterious old man somehow got himself intertwined into the Christian celebrations of the birth of their deity. In the Middle Ages, Santa was a shaman, and you can easily trace many similarities between the shamans of the past into our Christmas traditions of today. A shaman is, in many ways, similar to what we more commonly refer to in America as a medicine man. In Siberia, the local shaman was the oracle of the community. Nothing of importance happened in the community without the okay from the shaman. The shaman would also hold very strong plant knowledge. This knowledge included plants for medicine and healing, poisons and warfare, and powerful hallucinogenic plants used in their religious ceremonies. You can often find chimney sweeps on old holiday postcards holding the Amanita muscaria mushroom. This is but a subtle hint to the connection of someone with the Amanita mushroom and a chimney. The ancient shamans of Siberia would go to the houses, huts, or yurts of the people in the community in celebration of the winter solstice and bring them these pre-dried mushrooms and often guide them through the experience. It was their yearly tradition. If the main door to the yurt was snowed over, which they often were during the winter time, it is said that the shaman would enter symbolically through the secondary entrance. This just so happens to be the smoke hole in the roof or the chimney. The shaman, dressing in red and white and carrying a huge bag full of Amanita muscaria mushrooms that he had picked and dried during the previous season, enough for an entire community, would go door to door bartering and selling his dried mushrooms. And how would the shaman travel? He used a sleigh, and the animals pulling the sleigh were not dogs or horses. The Siberian shaman used caribou, also known as reindeer, as they were indigenous to Siberia. Amanita muscaria mushrooms go through a chemical process called decarboxylation as they dry. We'll talk more about this chemical process in a minute, 
but they also go through a physical process when they dry. They get lighter, 